The first certified P4 containment facility in the United States for recombinant DNA research, a laboratory designed to meet the requirements set forth in the NIH guidelines governing recombinant DNA research, is now available to scientists. The laboratory itself is under negative air pressure. The experiments are carried out from beginning to end inside an elaborate system of enclosed gas-tight cabinets. This means that nothing, not even the tiniest particle of dust or air, or the smallest microorganism, can penetrate the heavy stainless steel and glass cabinets. This system of cabinets measures about 70 feet in combined length. It is contained inside a room which has an area of about 400 square feet. Using the shoulder-length rubber gloves which are tightly attached to the sides of the cabinets, laboratory workers are able to move and control all the materials and tools used in the experiment without direct contact between their hands and anything inside the cabinet. Each experiment must be carefully planned, well in advance, since all of the materials used in the experiment, including chemicals, cultures, and laboratory equipment, must be brought into the group of interconnected cabinets, or cabinet line, as it is called. One of the methods of bringing materials into the cabinet is through an autoclave, or steam sterilizer. Equipment and materials are loaded onto a shelf inside the autoclave for transfer to the interior of the cabinet line. A heavy door is then swung into place and locked to provide a tight seal. A laboratory worker removes them from the cabinet side of the autoclave. Because the interior of the device has now been exposed to the inside of the cabinet, it will be necessary to run the autoclave through a sterilizing cycle before it is opened again on its outside end. The 250 degree Fahrenheit steam pressure cycle takes time. All large items have to enter through the autoclave, so planning its maximum use is essential. The cabinet lines are modular, that is, made up of individual connected units allowing the free movement of materials within the line. At least two workers are required for most manipulations and movements of materials. A variety of equipment for experiments must be contained within the cabinets, and that includes a refrigerator, which is used for both long and short-term storage of materials. Here, supplies of growth media are being checked and readied for later use in preparing bacterial culture. Another design feature of the refrigerator is movable shelves, which slide in and out to allow the laboratory worker easier access to materials stored within. Note the tools used to extend the limited reach of the researcher as he works within the restricted space of the gas-tight cabinet. The cabinet system in this laboratory has two levels, which are connected by a small elevator or dumbwaiter. Specially weakened strains of bacteria, which cannot survive outside the carefully controlled laboratory conditions, are grown in a water bath, located on the second tier of the system. Once the cultures have been grown and are ready for use in the experiment, they are transferred to the nearby elevator, which descends with them to the lower level. Here, most of the biochemical and microbiological steps in the experiment are actually carried out. The weakened strains of bacteria which are used in recombinant DNA research make up a second form of containment called biological containment. Although physical barriers or physical containment are highly effective in preventing the escape of microorganisms, biological containment adds a built-in safeguard. The crippled bacteria are so weak that they self-destruct outside the laboratory. These two types of barriers, physical and biological, are always used in combination. This particular cabinet system has an area with glove ports on both sides. This arrangement allows two laboratory workers to team up for some of the more delicate operations, such as the transfer of cultures or reagents from one container to another. 
Continuing the inventory of research tools mounted within the cabinet line is a high-speed centrifuge. This device, mounted flush with the bottom space of the cabinet, is used in purifying DNA. Spinning rapidly, DNA separates from protein and solvent. The control panel for this centrifuge is mounted outside the barrier of the gas-tight cabinets. Bacteria for experiments such as this are grown in single colonies which are cultivated in standard laboratory petri dishes. The petri dishes are kept in an incubator inside the cabinet line. The microscope is a vital tool in experiments involving microorganisms. An instrument is mounted in this laboratory's line. Despite the restraints that are imposed by the heavy rubber gloves, skilled laboratory workers are able to make delicate adjustments on the microscope. A closed-circuit television system with the screen mounted just above the researcher's head provides the means for viewing. A second means of entering the enclosed cabinet line is through a device called a dunk tank. This consists of a tank filled with a strong liquid disinfectant and is an integral part of the barrier and, like the autoclave, prevents the passage of unwanted living organism in either direction. A leak-proof container is used to convey materials needed inside the line safely through the dunk tank. Note how the attached gloves are pulled back inside the cabinet. This is due to the negative air pressure that is constantly maintained within the cabinets. This added safety feature ensures that no organism escapes should the gloves be punctured. 